using Canva for infographics and how to design a proper infographic just as a tutorial and a reminder. So of course we went to canva.com and we entered in and signed into our information. Um, there's a couple different things you could do to find your Canva. You could click infographic or if you don't see it on your screen like I do, you could just type in info. This will pop up an infographic. Now, of course, as always using Canva, the first thing we want to do is make sure that it's a free um, service that we have. And so we can check once we go in by looking to see if it says free or there's a money sign. For now, we can click blank. That's fine. And it'll pop us to this design. And so these are different templates that you can use. If you notice, this says free. Well, if we scroll down, perhaps these are all free. That's quite nice. This is a nice one. Now, if it doesn't say free, it's going to cost money. So my assumption is that one. So we can use any of these free ones to set up our infographic. Let's just use this one, for example. Once we click it, it'll have all this information and color scheme. And there's a lot of different things that we could do. So what I always recommend is by, double, by clicking here, we can move our... We don't need a lot of title screen. So we can minimize our title screen. We could also move it this way, move it up this way. And if you notice this little button right here, we can tilt it if we wanted to. So a couple different things that we could do for our title screen to set it up. And if you notice, this is our overall color. So you could change the overall color by double clicking it. So it doesn't have to be orange. It could be purple or blue or Whichever color it is that you wish to do, let's say pink for right now, why not? Okay. Now, if you notice over here, these these little lines right here, well, this will either increase or decrease. And as I was saying earlier, we don't need such a huge title. It wastes up a lot of our space. So my always recommendation is to double click here. We can minimize this to whatever we need. Let's just say 48 for now. Can, and then from there, once we get the little sign up, we move that up to here. And in this way, and then we click this so maybe it'll make both of these perfect. And in this way, our top space isn't being overrun um, or overrunning our actual project. And the nice thing is, again, we could move that here. We could separate something else. A lot of different options that we can do once we eliminate this space. And we don't even need to have uh, these little frilly lines again we could do a lot of editing so if you notice and those are our template selection you can choose different ones until you find the ones that you like we'll, we'll go settle for this one again oh and if we don't like what we did we could always click this little button up here click undo and leave it here now photos is photos that they offer for free and we'll get back to photos in a little bit. If you see, notice there's a money sign. Don't use those photos. There's lots of options, especially you can upload your own photos um, to make things so much more easier. Now, a little trick that we had, and we'll show it to you right there. It says one time use one dollar. No, thank you. We don't want to use that at all. Now, elements is going to be where most of our information is going to be. And in elements, you have a couple different options. You have grids. And what grids do is they allow you to set in design. Oops, let's go ahead and undo that. Set in design where and how big your picture will be. So let's say you want to enter two pictures in. We can click it here. We can minimize. And if you notice, we can't really see this information. So what? Well, how do we do that? How can we see it? When we click it here, we have our position. We move it to the front. And now whatever our pictures our images is are to the front so I could put two tiny you know tiny little images here and what we would do let's say we go to our free photo well, let's find one that's free sure let's go to new year any nice free there you go and what happens is notice this will go here but if once I put it in the frame it goes nicely there and now what I can do is if I didn't want some of these graphics I can move it up to here however I want to shape it. So that's what the elements of grids are for. Shapes, of course, just give you different shapes. So, for example, if I wanted to highlight this section here where it says economic impact and maybe even some of this text, well, I can select position. I can move it to the back. Well, that doesn't do any good for us, right? 
forward, and there we are. So when it's to the front, that means it's frontwards. To the back means it's all the way behind the page. But when we move it backward, oops, to the back, and then we move it forward, well, now we'll create a little background barrier if we chose to do so. And you have different shapes that you can use for that purpose. We have different charts, which is going to be on a different program that we'll do, or different tutorial guide, icons. And they're just, again, kind of like mini pictures or images that you could use. Uh, the images were uploaded, and some of these are mine. That oh, These are actually uploaded images that, that I accidentally selected. Icons, there we go. Icons, here, sorry about that. So icons, if I wanted to add a little, little heart, I could do so. And again, it's position to the back. Oh, can't see it to the front. Right, so different things, you know, if I wanted this one behind it, there it is, now it's behind that image. Right, and if I wanted this one forward, that'll be that one. So that's how you can kind of play around with the different options there. And frames are going to be the same thing as grid, only there's different designs. So again, if I have my frame here and I have my little heart, I want to add an image, let's say a photo, because you have to do a photo. Well, now it's just going to add into that frame. So it serves the same purpose as a grid, only it has different shapes and designs that you can use. So that's what frames are for. Uh, illustrations are, again, kind of similar to icons. Same with arrows that you can use to point to different items. So if I wanted to highlight this information, I can use an arrow. And lines if I wanted to create some sort of separation between the text on my own. Okay, so that's how the basic use of different elements are. And so again, here I can change this color to whatever I want, minimize this information. Oops, sorry about that. Use this to up scroll and minimize, and you can create your different spaces and text here. And don't forget, this is a little bit we can zoom in by using this percentage here. So at 100%, this is more of what it will look like um, as it gets closer. So there's a lot of information that you can put on here, um, and it'll still look really appropriate. So usually I use at the 100% marker to get a really good idea of what I'm looking at. Now, you can continue to use to delete. We just click the Delete button. And you can continue to use the text that they provided for you. You can change the text up here. Now, if you notice, again, these little king signs, so they are queen signs, and that just means that it costs money, but we can change our font. So we didn't, what we have, what we didn't do is we didn't highlight it. So if we highlight it, there we go. So we can change our font, our font color, bolding, bullet points, however we want, all that information is going to be there. Okay. And... Or, if we really wanted, we can add our own different types of text. So they have different type of text headings that you can use. So I can click this one, for example. And maybe I want to delete all of this information here. Delete. 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 Now I have Dazzle. And I can highlight it and change the color to white. Perfect. So... Again, you can enter text that way. I'd avoid videos for this art purposes. We just don't really need them because it's not. They're all going to be kind of um, printed. Though you could do that if you're going to be posting online. So you could post little gifs or videos. And again, to do that, it'll just select here. All right, and then you have our little video right there. You can explore that feature a little bit more. Uh, the backgrounds. What the backgrounds will do is, let's say you don't want this plain color. Well, now you can select different backgrounds. Instead of the color, it'll be one of these different options. They don't, so you got to be careful. You can play around with the different ones. If you notice, this isn't really coming out as clear as we would like. So there we go, a little bit. And you can change colors up here so you can do different things. And one way that would work is if you decided, for example, we're going to try to avoid adding a new page, but just to show you what the backgrounds would look like. And right now it looks like my computer isn't really quite loading them up, but they'll load them up a little bit nicer for your style once it's up to you. And lastly, the biggest question that we have is going to be 
on uploads. To upload an image, just click upload an image. So let's go with dogs from right here. Boom, there's a picture of a dog that I have. And then I can just add that picture here if I wanted. Or again, I can go to elements. I can go to grids. I can set my grid up here. Oh, got to minimize it a little bit. Or a lot of bit. Cha. And so and if you notice this is starting to become an issue, well, that's another advantage where you can go back. And then that way I have a little bit more access to go here. Then we go back to my uploads and just drag that over. So now when we zoom back in at 100%, it's right there. And these are the basics on how to use um, some of the features of Canva. And in the next video, we'll go ahead and show you how to specifically work with charts. Thank you.